Hi, Amy. How are Hi, you? Sir. How are I'm you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, yeah, good. good. How are you? Very good. Good. So, how's it uh, going for you, mathematics? Uh, yeah, my teacher's still not back, so kind of like still learning. Like, um, the, we moved on to pure maths now, um, learning it like kind of by myself. And then stats, it's kind of tricky, but yeah, I'm still trying to get my head around it. Okay. So, yeah. So, I looked into some of the questions which you had sent on mechanics. So, I thought. I'll take one of them and discuss it in details. And that should help you to solve most of the problems uh, based on constant acceleration and similar type of examples, right? Yes. So I was actually thinking like how to explain you because I wanted to understand what kind of difficulties you are facing in understanding the question. So I hope if that is addressed, then you'll be able to answer yeah. all the questions, right? That's the whole idea. So let me share yeah, with you. Definitely this finding yeah, I'm definitely finding, um, see, I've, my, I've got my tests next week, Tuesday, okay. and it's the modeling and mechanics, which I kind of like get um, mm -hmm. a bit more better than the whole constant acceleration thing. I know we've done a couple of videos on it. It's yeah. just like when it comes to the questions, I'm not really like, yeah. So when we go through this, you will see like where I'm like just not getting it. Like I just don't get it. So uh, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> how how was your math video. challenge? I mean, how was your math challenge? Oh, yeah. Um, I got a bronze certificate. So That's great. bronze, silver, and gold. Um, yeah, and out of, like, the people in my class as well who decided to do it, um, they didn't really get, like, any certificate. So I'm glad I even got bronze, which is still, like, achievement, considering, like, the limited time that we did it in. Um, so, yeah, I guess after doing that, I'll get um, a bit more idea when it comes to year 13 and be a bit more prepared yeah that's very good excellent Congratulations. Yes, thank you we hope thank for our goal next year you know yeah yeah okay. hopefully great so that's encouraging now uh, here is the question which we are going to discuss amy i'd like you to read the question and while you read also share with me what kind of difficulties you could face in you know answering such a question right so uh, this exactly. is a very general question. No values given. All are like uh, variables. OK, so can you please read the question? OK, an object P is moving on the x axis with a constant deceleration a meters per second squared. At time t equals to 0, P passes through the origin O with velocity u meters per second in the positive direction. The point A lies on the axis and OA is S meters. Mm -hmm. A, find the difference between the times when P passes through A. Mm -hmm. B, the total distance traveled by P during the interval between these times. Correct. So what is the kind of difficulty which you have in answering this type of a question? Okay, uh, if I could just talk through like what I would do and then yeah, yeah. Sure, tell me like, where I'm going wrong. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, find difference between the times when P passes through. So yeah, I would start with like a diagram and yeah. then I would plot, first I would like kind of read the question again. <laughs> so, and then like do what you said and do the SUVAT and then fill in the stuff, the values that I have and then values I need to find. Ready? So we got, um, if I write like SUVAT, can, can I yeah. write on this or no? Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You can tell me I'll write. You tell me. All right, okay, so write uh, SUVAT on the side. And then acceleration would be, since it's constant deceleration, it would be minus A meters per second squared. Yes. Um, and then at time at time T equals to zero. Yeah. So where you wrote, um, we were saying it passes through the origin. Oh, so at O, you would write T equals zero. Um, oh. And then write under O as well velocity is u meters per second Got it. in the positive direction so it would be to the right yeah um and then point a lies on the axis as well so yeah that distance between o and a is s meters mm -hmm. so yeah find the difference between the time so we need to find the time at that point a so if we've got um that we've got the velocity we've got the acceleration no we've got the initial velocity so we've got u 
uh, we got acceleration. Uh, we got the distance. So we've got U A N S. U A N S. Yeah, okay. that's the equation. <laughs> then you find the time. Perfect. So uh, okay. practically, that is how you're going to do it. So exactly what you said. When you have all this kind of a question, write all the values and identify which question you which equation will work for this question. So s equals to u t yeah. plus half a t square really work. And you'll realize that this displacement equation, which is u t plus half a t square, is a quadratic equation. And that really means that, and in this case, we are talking about the acceleration. That really means that the the term here will actually be negative, correct? So that is mm -hmm. kind of a parabola, which is going to be like this. And this parabola is going to strike at two different points. And those are the two times which we need to figure out, right? So the particle right. is moving along the x-axis, but it right, goes in this particular direction and then also returns as shown in this green line. So that is the path of the particle and it returns. And when it returns again, we have to find the second time when it is at A. And we are interested in finding the difference between the times when P passes through A. So that means difference between these two times, T2 minus T1. And then the second part is, during this time, what was the distance traveled by the particle? So these are the two type of questions which we are going to answer in this particular video, okay? So let's yeah. begin with the general thoughts about it just as uh, you were sharing with me your thoughts. Now, when we read this question second time, as you were saying, an object P is moving on the x-axis with a constant d acceleration. Very important. That really means that the A value, the acceleration value is negative A, right? So this is important to figure out. Then you write down, your, you make a diagram as shown here and mark all the things which are given to you initial velocity as u is given to us, acceleration of minus a is given to us, and the distance between zero and a is capital S. So we mark all these things. And as you said, we know we are given initial velocity and acceleration. We need to find time. We are also given the distance. Therefore, we can use this formula, s equals to ut plus half a t squared. Rearranging this formula, we get a quadratic equation. That quadratic equation can be solved with a quadratic formula, minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Substituting the values, we'll get the value of t. So that is going to be our solution. So now, let's put the values which we already have. So in this particular case, as we discussed earlier, we have v0 equals to u, a as minus s, s is capital S. When we substitute these values, what do we get? These are the values given to us. So the equation now becomes s equals to capital U t minus half a t squared. Bringing all the terms to one side, we get this quadratic equation. Using the formula, we get the value of t, and that simplifies to this particular formula, where obviously, if the square root term is greater than or equal to 0, you're getting to get two times. And difference between those two times will give you solution to part a. Perfect? Yeah. Now let's put some values because depending on the values, you'll get some answer, right? So what we have done here mm -hmm. now, we have replaced the capital U with four meters per uh, constant acceleration by four meters per second square. So the acceleration is given to us as four meters per second square at t equals to zero, p passes through this point with initial velocity of 14 meters per second. So we've written U as 14 meters per second and the distance s in between has been given now as 12 meters. So we have s as 12 meters. We know the formula s equals to ut plus half a t works. Substituting these values, we get our equation, which is 12 equals to 14 t minus half 4 t squared. Rearrange, and then this was simple equation. I took the value so that you, know, you could use factoring and get the answer. So once you factor, you get t minus one times t minus six equals to zero. And you get two different times, which is t equals to one and t equals to six when the particle passes through the point A. And the difference between these two times will give you the answer, which is five seconds. 
clear, right? So when yeah. the values are given, it, is, it becomes much more simpler. Just substitute the values, get your answer. Now, part B is to find the distance du during this interval, which was traveled by the particle. Now, distance traveled is a tricky part since distance is a scalar quantity, correct? So <laughs> at T1 and at T2, actually speaking, the particle crosses A and then comes back. So at both the times, displacement is zero, right? It is at this point, correct? Yeah. So displacement is zero. However, it has traveled a distance going to the maximum and then coming back. So what we are now interested in finding is how much distance did it travel maximum away from the point and then return? This is what we are interested in calculating. You get the idea. Uh, that is how we can find the distance traveled during this time. You understand this part B now? But, but why won't it be between, I know, o, so O and A, that distance is given, which is 12 meters. Yes. But between the, because we just calculated the time and the difference between the time were five seconds. So are you saying from going like after that point A and then coming back, that's five seconds? So this was the difference between the two times coming and going back. But we also know both the times when the particle is at A. You get the idea? Yeah. Right? So let me explain. Yeah. You, Which was uh, like the T equals. Got it. So let me also stuff. explain okay. you with the help graph, graph so that you can picture this and remember. So basically, as okay. you can see here, I've plotted the graph. This particular graph shows the displacement. You see that displacement? The particle crosses the origin, goes to some maximum, and then returns. What are we interested in? We are interested in finding the time when it crosses A, right? So during this time, we can clearly see that the particle goes some distance away and then returns by the same distance. Correct? So that becomes mm -hmm. yeah. the, the situation. The acceleration is constant, is given to us as negative. This is your negative acceleration, which is A equals to minus 4 meters per second square. And V equals to U plus AT, so that graph shows here is the velocity v equals to u which is initial velocity of uh, how much 14 meters per second right plus a which is minus in this case right minus 40 so that becomes the equation of the velocity i'm only giving you these things once again here since the question could have parts c d e many other parts in which you may be required to find velocity at different intervals. You may even be required mm. to sketch this particular graph, which I've sketched before you, correct? Now, the particle which is stationary is shown here. This is the particle which is 12 units away from the origin. Now, clearly it is striking at two points and these two points are the times which we just calculated as one and six. So that diagram actually gives you the complete situation. Now, coming back to the question, where we want to find the distance traveled by the particle during the given interval. So the easiest way is from point O, find the maximum distance particle is traveling. Because at the maximum distance, this is a turning point. At turning point, the final velocity is going to be zero. So we can actually find that if acceleration is given to us as minus four, velocity is given to us as 14, and final velocity is zero, what is the displacement? That is the whole trick. So we are given the acceleration of minus four, initial velocity of 14 meters per second. Now, this displacement at turning. So when this turns, that is the maximum displacement. That is what we are trying to figure out. At that point, the velocity, the final velocity is zero. Now we can use the formula v square minus u square equals to 2a s, rearrange, s is v square minus u square over 2a. Substitute the values, you get the maximum displacement as 24.5. So now we know that this distance here is 24.5 
from here to here. The Wait, total distance. How come we're doing displacement if we're trying to find distance? Yes, so that is the next step. So now we know that this particular point is 12 units away, right? So mm -hmm. this distance is going from here to 24.5 and coming back the same distance. So as you can see, from here, 24.5 minus 12 is one side, the other side also same, times two gives us the total distance of 25 meters. You get the idea? Um, no, I do. It's just, yeah. I think I need more practice. Yes, see, what we found uh, is, let me clear this. From zero to maximum, the displacement was 24.5 units. We want to find how much distance was traveled. So in this direction, distance traveled was 24.5 minus 12, because this is 12 units away. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it returned the same. So times two, 25 meters is the total distance traveled by the particle during this time. You get the idea? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it actually does make sense now. So S, just to clarify, means displacement, right? In the yes, SUVAC yes, equation. Yes. yes. S is oh, so you need to use the S to find the dis displacement. Then from that, you find the distance. Correct. Oh. So we found the maximum displacement. See, since the particle goes through that point twice, that means it is turning back and then going through that point, correct? So we find yeah. the turning point. Turning point will be the maximum displacement. At a turning point, the velocity is going to be zero. That helps us to find the maximum displacement. And from maximum displacement, we find our total distance traveled during that time. So it's, it's a very important question and a difficult question to answer. Mm. You get the idea now. Wait, so the only way you found the turning point um, is by drawing the graph. You couldn't have done it any other way. No, we could have done because we know at turning point, the velocity is zero, right? And therefore, yeah. we could directly use this formula v square minus u square equals to 2as and find the maximum displacement. You get the idea? Oh, um, okay. Yeah. And so we'll get it. Graph definitely helps us to understand the overall situation. Second, as a part of your question, part C could be graph this situation. You get the idea? So, mm -hmm. so you may be required to sketch velocity and time graph, acceleration and time graph, which is a constant, but displacement and time graph. That could be another part of the question, correct? Right? So now mm -hmm. you can try this question with some other distance. You can change the distance from 12 to something else and then figure it out. The only thing is only this calculation will change. Get the idea? And you'll be mm -hmm. able to find yeah. Anyway, the method is going to be the same. Perfect. So that is how yeah. you answer these types of questions. Do you completely understand it? Yeah, I do. Perfect. It's just, yeah. I know you obviously can't go through every single question. Then some new thing pops up and I'm like, oh, what do I do? And I know it's something to do with Subat, but like... like it's, yeah, it's just not working. Yeah. Uh, do I have to memorize all these equations or? Yeah, these they give only, it the, only these the uh, four equations you should formula remember. Booklet. These formulas, right? They are, they are, oh. Last time we derived all the formulas, right? From V equals to U plus AT and yeah. average uh, velocity into time is displacement. You get these formulas very easy for constant acceleration. Okay, yeah. And then once you do 10, 12 questions, you'll always remember them. Perfect. So that is the okay. first part yeah. of our learning. Uh, I like you to summarize, like, what did you learn in solving such a question? Um, so the main thing uh, is uh, once you've read the question, first label like all the SUVAT um, things, things that are given in the question and things then you need to find. Um, diagrams are always needed to like 
see what is actually going on. And like we've shown here with the labels, um, graphs are very important because um, I think I also, when I picture things and questions, it's always in a graph form so I can get a nice like visual. So like when you showed um, the velocity is zero at the turning point, um, that was really clear from the graph because um, it's like a straight line when you draw it at the turning point um, and stuff like that. So that's very important. Uh, I think it's just about kind of breaking down the question into more right. easier sections so you can like understand it. That's good. Yeah. Now, with that done, I'll take up another type of uh, example, uh, which is uh, involving vectors. So I saw in many of your examples, uh, uh, when you're talking about position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration, mm -hmm. vectors come very handy, and uh, it's, a, it's a very important thing to learn. Many questions can be solved using vectors, right? So I'll give you some basics about vectors and then take up four or five questions. I have some figures here, which are related to the questions which we are going to take in this particular example. So what are vectors? As you know, vectors are the things which have both direction and magnitude. The other quantities are scalars, which do not have direction, but they have magnitude. So position is a vector. Yeah. Displacement, velocity, and acceleration are vectors. On the other hand, distance is scalar quantity. It does not have a direction. Similarly, speed, which is the magnitude of velocity, is also scalar quantity, not a vector quantity. Correct? Now, Vectors can be represented in many different ways. And of course, the coordinate plane is probably easiest to display the vectors. So uh, what I will do here is on this particular graph, I do have a vector. Now this vector is starting from a point which is at the origin. So we call this as a position vector. So position vectors are those which will start from origin. So in general, if, you are, if I say there is a vector this, you can always draw a coordinate plane and start this vector from the origin itself. It makes things very simple. Now, this vector, which is starting at the position O, which is the origin in this case, is going to point A. So we'll call this as a vector OA. So we'll write an arrow showing that it goes from O to A. Now, describing it on the coordinate plane becomes simpler if I take i as a unit vector in x direction and j as a unit vector in the y direction. Then I can split this vector in two parts, i component and the j component. Everything which is towards the right-hand side and going up is positive. So in this particular case, you can see that moving from O to A will be moving one, two, three, four units right. So I could write this as 4i. And then we are moving down one, two, three units. That means minus 3j. So that represents the vector OA. Is that clear to you? Yeah. We also write i and j when we write with cap on top, this signifies a unit vector, right? So this i and j are unit vectors in the direction of x and y. Now, to find the magnitude of this vector, we'll write OA, magnitude with absolute bars. It's like a, you know, I, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So that is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, correct? So you can see this is a right triangle. So we know this is the hypotenuse. And therefore, we can write this as square root of a square plus b square, which is 4 square plus 3 square. Minus 3 will become plus 3. So I've written like this, which is 5. So the magnitude is 5 for this particular vector. To find the direction, we know that it is moving downwards from x-axis. So the angle theta is negative. You could write this angle as negative. The other convention is to always write angles as positive when they are seen counterclockwise. So that is the angle which could be the answer. Now, 
To find the answer, what we do here is we just do tan of theta, which is equal to opposite side over adjacent, the ratio. In this case, the opposite side is three units and that is four units. So that is three over four and the angle theta will be tan inverse of three over four. You can calculate this. Now this angle is not the true answer. What we have done here is we have taken the positive values. Now, once you have sketched, you can write this answer depending on the situation. You can write this answer as the angle is equals to minus whatever you get since this is a negative angle, or you could write this as 360. Let us say phi is our angle. So we'll say phi is equals to minus theta, or we say phi is equals to 360 degrees minus theta, right? So in, in degrees. So that is the other angle. So that is how you could give the direction to the vector. So what I've explained to you is what is the position vector? How can we find its magnitude and its direction? So all the vectors should be treated in this particular fashion. Is that part clear to you? Yeah. Perfect. So we have also discussed how to find magnitude and direction. We also covered what is a unit vector. Unit vector has a magnitude of one and the direction will be either in the x direction, then it is a unit vector i, or in the y direction, unit vector j. Displacement, change in position is displacement. As you can see, O to A will be the displacement. We'll look into velocity, acceleration, and distance with the help of some examples. I've given you some diagrams, which will help you later. Okay, so let's take the Just type. a quick thing. Yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, uh, but in one of my um, questions in my book, um, I so I found the angle like you did here, and then I did 360 minus that. But yeah. their answer was 180 minus that. So I don't understand why they did 180 instead of 360. Okay, so, so uh, you send show me that the conditions. Me. I I do have a question similar to what you're talking about. Uh, we will see oh, why right. it could be 180 minus that. It all depends when we are trying yeah. to give the angle. It could be with reference to x-axis. It could be with reference to the y-axis. So if it is reference oh. to y-axis, in that case, the answer could be 180 minus or plus, depending on what the situation is. You get my idea? All right. So yeah, let's yeah. go through some examples, and I hope that point will be covered in this video. Okay? Now, can you please read these four questions? Yep. Um, okay, so question one. Vector A, B has a tail at minus one, minus three, and a head at two, one. Sketch the vector AB, find the magnitude of the vector AB, and then determine the coordinates of the point D on the vector CD if C is two minus two, and um, AB, like the vector AB equals um, CD. Got it. How will you approach this question? Um, so I'll first um, like get a sketch a coordinate grid or if they give right. one um, and then start pl plotting the points. So if it says, um, I'll just put the tail and put the head and then join the line like that, right. fine, that will be AB. Um, and then put the direction from A to B because it says okay. sketch the vector. So the arrow is important um, right. since it's a vector quantity. Um, then find the magnitude. So, um, is that where you said just Pythagoras' theorem, where you go along and then square that, and then, yes. yeah, square root that. Then determine the coordinates of the point D on the vector CD. Yes. If C is this. So I'll plot point C, Let's and then a, if B I and, know... Yeah, we know the C, we have to find D. This is AB. How will you find D? Okay, so since we know the um, that A... Oh, that's AD. Yeah, sorry, sorry, AB. What did you mean B? Okay, cool. Um, so if it was AB, then that magnitude, whatever that value is, um, CD will also equal that. And then, and then um, you need to find the coordinate point in which when you do Pythagoras' theorem, can you work backwards? You can literally just go C squared equals A squared plus, or no? Yeah, you could do backwards, okay. Now, uh, well, that could be long. That could be very long. So what are you trying to say? Yeah. You need to equate A, B magnitude with C, D magnitude. Correct? Yeah. Now, if you follow this method, this is where I was 
if you do this, then it will be a very long way. So I will say, don't do it. Okay. Uh, this will not okay. be correct and this will lead to uh, difficulty. So let us see our approach of solving this particular question. Of course, the first half is exactly what you said. So in this, we have a vector AB whose tail is at minus one, uh, minus three. So we are given that vector point A, which is at minus one, minus three, and B is shown at two, one. So vector AB is given in this solid line. Now, uh, to find the magnitude of this vector, uh, we'll use the distance formula using Pythagorean theorem. The distance formula, as you know, is x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square square, right? So that is the distance formula which we have used here, and the distance comes out to be five units. To find the angle, which is the next part of it, in this case, we're saying find the direction of vector AB from the unit vector i. So this is very important. We have to find the direction from the unit vector i. It really means unit vector i will be in the direction of x-axis. So you have to find the angle theta as shown here. Now, clearly, we can actually think about this as a right angle triangle. We can use the tangent ratio, change in y over change in x, and that gives you 4 over 3, and the angle will be tan inverse of 4 over 3, which is 53.1 in this particular case. So we get our angle yeah. theta, and that is with reference to the unit vector i. So this part is done very clear, no doubt about it. Perfect. The second part of this question is kind of tricky. Now, in the second part, well, <laughs> I'll show you here because I think I did not copy that. Anyway, here, there we go. So we did this part, which is uh, we found that the angle was 53.1 uh, degrees. And now we need to find the point D. So we are given that the we need to do this part. Determine the coordinates of point D on the vector CD if C is 2 minus 2 and AB is equal to CD. So clearly AB is drawn as we did last time and C is the point given to us. So what you could do here is, since we know that these two vectors are the same, their magnitudes will also be same, you can calculate the length and then equate the lengths. However, I will not go further from here because that leads to a lot of difficulties. You have two variables, x and y. You know, point D will have two variables, x coordinate and y coordinate. But this distance mm -hmm. will give you one equation and you need to find two things so it will not really work. So it's very important right. here is to look into the gradient part also. Do you understand? So the gradient part is kind of clear. So we know that the gradient is also same because they have the same direction, right? right. Same direction means same gradient. The gradient of the given vector AB is 4 over 3, right? So that is the gradient of the given vector. So the vector CD should also have four over three as your gradient. And we are using the point D as x, y. And therefore, y minus y2 over x minus x2 will give us the gradient. Equate it to four over three. Now, how do we get two equations from here? Can you see? The two equations are equate the numerator and the denominator. So equate the numerator and denominator. So this is denominator. That is to say, oh. 3 should be equals to x minus 2. And that is the numerator. Oh, that makes sense. So we did slope. Oh. No calculations required of distance. Nothing to do with quadratic. And simple linear equations. Just equate. And you find the value of x will be 5 and the value of y will be 2 to satisfy this particular equation. You get the idea. So, so what you're saying is if ve two vectors or like multiple vectors, if they have the same magnitude, it means they have the same direction, so same no, no. gradient. If two vectors are equal, then they have the same magnitude and same direction. If they have the same magnitude, they may not be equal because the direction may be different. Oh, but since 
because here it says equal saying vector. the direction is both going in the same oh because right. the vectors are equal okay. not not my, even the vectors are equal both the things right now i'll show you another neat way of doing it on the graph itself this vector we found was 4 over 3 right so that or you can say 3 yeah. you four, move 3 units towards x 1 2 and 3 and 4 up 1 2 3 4 you get a point read the point and this point clearly is oh. from here 5, five two. done no calculations required so if you are given a graph paper or you just plot small sketch as it is you know clearly that the vector which you are looking forward will be cd where point d will be 5 2 do you see that mm. that's the beauty of vectors and most of the questions in vectors will be done oh. like this no calculations required all right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That was good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was good because yeah, when if you were gonna do like the one that you put an X next to, which I which my mind was gonna go to, I would have been there forever, and then ended up with only one solution. So yes. that would have been pointless. Correct. Now let's look into the second question. We will do four in this particular case. Can you please read the question number two? Um, the velocity of a car is given by V equals 12I minus 9J meters per second. Find the speed of the car, then find the angle, the direction of the car makes with the unit vector I. Perfect. Now, to find the speed, basically you have to find the magnitude. That is what speed is. Velocity is given to us as 12I minus 9J. So the magnitude of this velocity is A squared plus B squared square root. You get the answer as 15. So this, the speed is 15 meters per second in this particular case. To find the angle, though that is the tricky part. To find the angle, it is better to sketch first. So at this stage, when you are given this vector to us, then you sketch. When you sketch, you land up in quadrant four, correct? So you clearly have an idea, what is this angle theta? So you have to give this angle theta as a negative value, that could be the right answer, or 360 minus this angle. So basically, it is important to find the reference angle and then write down the answer, correct? That is kind of very important for us to do. So here, what we have done is directly, we just substituted the values and we got tan theta as minus three over four. And when we use the calculator, we do get the right answer. The right answer is minus 36.9, correct? And Mm -hmm. or, or you could write this as 360 minus 36.9 and you could write the right answer. So you do get what, in this particular situation the right answer. Yes. Yeah, but what doesn't make sense is um, it says find the angle that the direction of the car makes with the unit vector i. So if it says unit vector i, it's just basically saying x-axis. Yes. Unit or vector no. i is x-axis. Oh. So you, you have to write the answer as 360 minus that. Correct. Or, so, or negative oh. object. So both will work. Okay. So negative. minus 36.9. Okay. Right. Both will work. Now, the caution here is, I've purposely taken this example. Many students will think this gives you the right answer. Well, of course, next time I, I'll do next question where the answer will be wrong. So then you'll realize that um, doing this, directly substituting the value is not a good idea. Okay. Anyway. Oh, but but okay. we'll discuss the alternate method. The alternate method, which is for me, the general method to solve such question is find the related acute angle. So a related acute angle means think about all the things in quadrant one. So everything is positive. So we have tan beta as three over four. Let this angle be beta and we do not go to quadrant four. We are working quadrant one. Find the related acute angle. Now, beta is 36.9 with the calculations. Since we know from this sketch that the answer lies in quadrant four, therefore the angle will be right on the actual answer. Do you get the idea? Oh, 360 okay. minus this, like we do in trigonometry. So same concept right. that we apply to find the angle and then you get your answer. Is that clear? Oh, okay, yeah. So you're always doing like quadrant one or... Yeah, and then get the real answer. No, always do it in... Yeah, okay. So always find related acute angle. Perfect. Let's take question number three. Can you please read this question? 
Yeah. Um, the acceleration of a car is given by A equals minus 3i minus 2j meters per second squared. Find the magnitude of acceleration, then find the angle the direction of the car makes with the unit vector j. Got it. So only thing is velocity has been changed by acceleration is the same vector. So the magnitude, no problems, a squared plus b squared right. square root. And you substitute the values, you'll get 3.61 as your answer. Now, let's look into the angle part. So like last time, if I substitute minus 3 over, I mean, minus 3 over minus 2, then what do I get? In that case, uh, I should have written the other way. <clears throat> Change in one. Yeah, because uh, J, y value is 2, right? So this is incorrect, OK? Right, this, I see it. Yeah, uh, my, this is incorrect. OK, anyway, you may have, can you please redo the calculations? Let's do 2 over 3. So what is the angle you get? Um, Tan inverse of I don't have my Oh, I have it here. OK. Sorry, I don't have my calculator. Uh, I yeah. mean, Damn inverse two divided my bag. no problem. I'll do it. 33.69. So we get 33 point, let's say seven. Okay. So we get 33.7 okay. as our angle. Now see, when you sketch the diagram, the question is A is minus 3i minus 2j. You are in quadrant three, correct? 33.6 yeah. is not a correct answer for sure. But you know, 33.7 tan value is positive. That really means it could be in quadrant one or in quadrant three because tan value is positive, correct? Mm -hmm. In quadrant three also, it is positive. That's the whole key, right? Therefore, we will not go for straight answer. We'll go for acute angle. We clearly know that our angle beta now is 33.7, correct? So this angle beta is 33.7 degrees. Now, what do we need to find? The question says, find the angle, the direction of the car makes with unit vector j. Do you see that? We have to find from here, j. So clearly from right. here, this is vertically opposite angle. So this angle here is 33.7. Correct? From j, it okay. is how much? 90 plus 33.7. 90. So you just we add get 90. our answer as 90 plus 33.7 as our answer. We'll just add 90 to this. You get the idea. So it is yeah. 3.7. Wait, what um, topic is this again with the quadrant three and knowing the re related acute angles? Uh, in trigonometry, when you find any angle, Okay. That. Wait. In, that okay. goes I think I need to revisit that. Yeah, you can you review. Yeah. Trigonometry. trigonometry. Yeah, any angle. Any angle. Correct. So you see, realize that it is better to find the related acute angle and then looking into the requirement. In this case, we have to find the angle from y axis. It should be. 90 plus the related acute angle. And that gives mm -hmm. you the answer. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Perfect. That is how we'll do. Now, coming back to your question, if, if the situation is such that we have a, uh, some vector, which is in this place, correct? In that case, that is the related acute angle beta. And if you have to find the angle from y-axis, then it will be how much? Um, 360 minus beta. 270 minus beta. Because this is 90. Oh, yeah. Get the idea? Then it will be 270 minus beta. You have to be careful. Depending oh. on where you are. Get mm -hmm. the idea? And we right. can you have to yeah. find it could be a different thing. It is not always 360 minus theta. Is it clear to you? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So here's the last. Yeah. Okay. Can you please read this question? An object moves from A to B 
and then from B to C. The displacement from A to B is 8i plus 5j kilometers. Yeah. The displacement from B to C is minus 6i plus 6j kilometers. Mm -hmm. Find the magnitude of displacement from A to C. Ready? Then find the total distance traveled from A to C and then find the angle A to C, um, which makes with the unit vector I. Got it. So the X axis. So we'll go step by step. First okay. is sketch your diagram, right? So an object moves from A to B and then from B to C. The displacement from A to B is given to you as 8I plus 5J. So on a coordinate mm -hmm. plane, 8i plus 5j, what I've done here is I've taken each as two units. So this is two units each. So 8, we'll go four units, one, two, three, four, and then we get point B. So that is my vector AB, right? So 8i plus 5j. And then from there, the second vector is minus 6i plus 6j. So that is the second position from here, and we land up at C. So we have our diagram we really want to find total distance traveled from A to C. Remember, distance traveled. So distance basically means we'll add this distance AB to the distance BC. So we'll add both the distances to find the total distance. Individually, we can find both the distance. AB is eight square plus five square square root, which gives us 9.433 and BC is six square plus six square square root, which gives us 8.485, correct? Those are the distances. Add them up to get the total distance. And so you get the first part, clear. So you can't find the magnitude of AC and then do this whole square root like mm -hmm. this. That will be the displacement. Okay. You have to individually add the distances uh, then you get the total distance, right? First you travel, let's say two kilometers, then you travel three kilometers, you will add two and three to get five kilometers as your answer rather than direct as the crow flies. No, they're not that distance. That is the displacement. Oh, okay. Now, second part is find the angle AC, which it makes with vector I, unit vector I. So that is the angle which we need to figure out. So that means we need to find what is the vector AC, right? Or displacement from A to C, the net displacement. So that is addition, right? So in a triangle, we use addition rule, right? So you can add. We know that AC is equals to sum of AB and BC, right? So add these two vectors to get the vector AC, which is the final displacement. So we added these two vectors, AC is AB plus BC. Adding them, 8i plus 5j equals to minus 6i plus 6j. Basically, combine the like terms. So in the i direction, 8 minus 6 gives you 2. And j direction, 5 plus 6 gives you 11. So you get the vector ac as 2i plus 11j. Once you have this vector ac, find the angle. Now you know the vector. This angle could be found by treating this as your right angle triangle. So tan theta will be 11, the y component over two, the x component, right? And theta will be tan inverse over 11 over two, which is 79.7 degrees. So that becomes the angle with the x axis. Is that clear to you now? Yeah, yeah. So that is how this type of a question can be done. So with that, right. we come to an end of this yes. particular lesson where we cover how do mm -hmm. we solve questions based on acceleration, constant acceleration, and how do we utilize the learnings of vectors in solving mechanics problems. So these were simple basic problems, but later we will see how we are going to use vectors to solve really complicated questions um, involving mechanics, okay, even dynamics. All right. Perfect. Okay, yeah. So, Amy, can you summarize what you have learned in this second session on vectors as an application for position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration? Yeah, so um, I kind of got like introduced today um, to the concept of this 
um, whole like IJ thing, which is um, in the position of I, you're going uh, along the X axis and then J going along the Y axis. Um, and then just whether it's positive or negative, that depends on the direction and the vector like that's given. So um, a couple of questions that we worked through. So like mainly when doing this, when you find um, your angle, like t um, your angle theta, uh, you use tan and then find the angle, but then you have to look what the uh, question is saying and saying like where it's from. So if it's from um, I, then you would have to look from the X axis and then find it. The angle can be negative if it's still from the X axis, or you can do 360 minus that or 270 or depending on what is given. Um, so if it was 270, that would have to be from J because you would like count like that. But yeah, anyways, um, so read the question when it comes to the direction of like the angle. And then um, when we looked, I think it was just the last question, which was quite important, like that I thought um, was when you have like the magnitude, uh, like the vector that's given. Diagram of the last question is here. So all the three diagrams. Okay. Are all oh, right okay um yeah so with the last one um when we said from um we've got the vector a to b and then b to c um we wanted to find the total distance and i thought you you can just take um the uh like the ij of that the a to b and then the b to c and then just add it and then get a to c and then find it but you can't do that because a to c uh, when you do it that way since it's the magnitude would be the displacement, but they're asking for the total distance traveled. So you have to find them individually, A and B and then B and C, and then add it like that. Yeah. Um, these things can look really simple, but it's just that when you're in the exam and stuff, like due to the pressure, your brain can do like really stupid things. So um, these concepts, like the basics is really important to get nailed. What you also learn, Emmy, from here is that distance will always be greater than or equal to displacement since Sum of two right. sides of the triangle is greater than the third side. You get the idea. Right. So that actually yes. proves that this, this uh, distance will be greater than displacement. So with that, greater we come displacement. To end right. our uh, lesson on this mechanics. And uh, I hope you got the concepts. You can mail me the questions which you have, and we'll discuss them later. OK? All right, cool. Thank you so much, sir. All Thank you best. for this overview, because when it's like, at, even at school, I think, I, like I said, my teacher's been like absent and stuff. That's why I'm not really strong on this topic. It, nope. I know it seems simple, but like my brain, my brain's not like kind of working around it. So yeah, my test is Tuesday, so I still got a loads of time to like really up my game. So yeah, I'll let me know which other day. Do a lot of practice, and we will do rest of the yeah. things on that particular day. Okay, email me in that. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Okay, Thank you so much, sir. Bye. Have a good rest of your week. Bye. Thank you, sir.